All right, we've got a uh, quick conversation about uh, aquatic invasive species uh, for awareness and prevention of uh, movement, proliferation. Aquatic invasive species are nasty things. They are not our friends. We do not want them in our streams and waterways. And we should do everything we can to prevent us contributing to that problem. And since we are uh, pretty consistently plugged into our waterways, uh, pulling water, pushing water, this and that, uh, it's, it's highly likely that we are contributing to the spread of these to some degree. All right, we'll start with aquatic plants. Um, these would be invasive plants that are around water, which we happen to be working next to as well because we get water. All right, first up uh, in the plant category, Eurasian milfoil. It's considered the most problematic plant in Washington. They form dense mats of vegetation on the surface of the water and kind of choke out everything else. Not a good plant to be spreading around the countryside. And then we have the, ch yeah, chytrid fungus. We're going to go with chytrid fungus. Um, it's a fungus, and it's microscopic, and it causes an infectious disease in amphibians. It's suggested as a principal cause of worldwide amphibian decline. And then there's the uh, beautiful Didymo, at least it has a cool name. Uh, or rock snot. Alter stream ecology by forming dense algae blooms. They can cover up to 100% of stream bottoms. It's a microscopic alga. It can be spread in a single drop of water. Currently in California and Idaho and the Midwest and Eastern states. We don't have it as of the uh, publication here, which was, I believe, 2008. So it's been a while. Um, yeah. This is certainly not all inclusive in addition to those uh, identified plants and funguses and algae. We also have animals and uh, certainly many more things we didn't address. Um, it, yeah, similar to plants, they're a non-native animal and they displace native wildlife and or plants, most of which are a mollusk. First up, we have the New Zealand mud snails, which are... Uh, it appears fairly prolific across the West. Uh, they may outcompete other grazing species of snails, probably. Um, they cause declines in species richness and abundance of native snails. Uh, next up is the infamous zebra mussel, which I think most of us have heard of. Uh, they can live out of water for up to a month if not subjected to heat or extreme drying conditions. Uh, therefore, they're easily transported. They threaten native fish and wildlife by consuming, by consuming available food and smothering native species. They can grow up to two inches. Okay, and next up is uh, the quagga mussel. Quagga mussels are hardier than zebra mussels. They thrive in locations zebra mussels cannot. They'll clog pipes and pump intakes. Uh, they consume food that supports native species, including salmon and steelhead. And uh, we don't want them. They're not good. And then there's the whirling disease parasite. It usually causes neurological damage to young fish, causing the affected fish to whirl or corkscrew pattern. Fish to whirl in a corkscrew pattern. Uh, makes feeding difficult. Makes them easy targets for predators. They have a tendency to die. Certainly not going to claim to be an expert on aquatic invasive species. But fortunately, since I'm not an expert, we have this uh, Aquatic Invasive Species Policy Direction that uh, NWCG just released. No, they didn't just release it. It's been out for quite some time. Um, but it's going to help give you information on how you can prevent the transport of uh, aquatic invasive species. And uh, I will try to drag up a link to that and uh, get that available to everybody.
but it gives you best management practices, which is really what we needed, what you need. And you probably, it's probably an item you ought to carry with you so that you can peruse it on the road when you're traveling and you end up in some place that you don't know if they have a problem or not. Uh, shows you how to do decontaminations and uh, yeah, good reference material right there. So some what can you do is, um, well, first you should download that guide to preventing aquatic invasive species transport by wildland fire operations and uh, read through that, see what kind of helpful tips are in there, but also understand and follow the standard operating procedures for aquatic invasive species in your area and help those that come into your area to understand those procedures as well. Uh, brief people coming in, get briefed when you go outside your area. Ask the question, is there anything you need to know about it? So for cleaning and sanitizing your equipment, um, I, I'm again going to refer you back to the guide to preventing aquatic invasive species transportation by wildland fire operations. Um, I think that's probably your best source for uh, specific information on, on what to do, how to do. Uh, I think the, the comment here, the point here is it's difficult to screen for these. Some of it's so small. Uh, it also, you're so mobile, you could end up going anywhere at any time. So think about aquatic invasive species when you're uh, moving your vehicle, truck, fire engine around, and uh, what might you be packing around? Maybe you dump your water and, you know, run a, a bleached tank or something and use some chemicals to sterilize things. Um, again, refer to that guide to see if it has anything that uh, is useful, but, uh, um, and then you'll have to dispose of that, say, you know, chemical sterilization of your tank appropriately, which may not be nearly as difficult as, as it may sound, but uh, MSDS is an option for that. And here's a tickler list of some common sense. You didn't see me air quote that, but I wish I could. Uh, mitigation measures for aquatic invasive species prevention, because really there may be a new one out there that you don't even know about. It may not be in the book. Uh, and you certainly don't want to spread things around. So think about these mitigation measures. Always assume that some sort of aquatic invasive species could be present in any body of water. When possible, avoid driving through bodies of water because you don't want to stick to the truck. Avoid dumping water directly from one waterway into another or I mean, just think about the water you're spraying out your nozzle. Is it going into a different waterway? Is there any way we can avoid that? Let's try to do our best to do so as frequently as possible. Avoid drafting water from multiple sources during a single operational period unless equipment is sanitized between sources. That may be fairly impractical, but uh, I, I think the key there is avoid it. And I think your awareness of the fact that aquatic invasive species exist is, is the key there. Um, try not to suck organic and bottom material when drafting, which you don't want to do anyway. Clean out and sanitize the plumbing strainers, really the plumbing and strainers in your vehicle. Um, not a bad idea to, uh, you know, do an air out occasionally on a nice hot sunny day with uh, the sun beating down on your plumbing, um, if at all possible. 